As we've seen in previous lessons, masks offer a great way to isolate various portions of the image uh, to allow us to complete what it is we want to do to those isolated areas. In this image, I'm going to show you how I can separate out the bark of this ancient bristlecone pine, and this image was captured in the White Mountains above Bishop, California in the Shulman Grove uh, at about 10,000 feet in a portion of the grove called the Ancients. And this is an actual living bristlecone pine, one of the oldest living uh, trees on the planet. And the goal here is going to be to separate out this beautiful um, sensual line of the bristle cone and enhance the mid-tone contrast and in essence bring up the sharpening and then we're going to separate we're going to keep that separate from the sky back here um, if you followed my videos you know that i love using the dynamic contrast filter in both nick and on one software to bring up the mid-tone contrast but if we don't use a mask that mid-tone contrast is going to build in the sky back here uh, in an essence bring up the look of noise. So I'm going to teach you today how to keep these two separate and how to build a mask in Photoshop's uh, select color. So we're in Lightroom obviously and we're going to go over here in the basic uh, command and going to put in a few settings. I'm going to go ahead and change this to daylight to just warm it up a little bit. I'm going to set my white point, which I do on every image. So we're going to move the whites just until we start to see right there part of the sky build up and then we're going to back it off and we're going to go here and set the blacks. What I'm doing is holding the alter option button on both the whites and blacks. And all I want to do here on the shadows, or excuse me, on the blacks, is get it just a little bit of the blacks, and that's down in this area, the deepest black. Let me go back to the whites because I didn't show you that. This is the alter option, and when I click on that knob, um, it will turn the screen black. And I'm just looking for when the color first comes in and then backing it off. Okay, so I've set up here in my histogram my white and black point. I'm going to come up here to my highlights, uh, and that's basically this area of the sky right in here, and I wanna bring that down, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down 100 um, points. Now, that's gonna change my white point a little. It's probably drugged that off, so let's hold down on the alter option and reset that, and you can see I've gone up three points, not a lot, but we've reset it. Um, a few other, places I want to go here. I'm going to come into my hue saturation and make sure that the saturation is enabled. And I'm going to click on the targeted adjustment tool, move it in over the uh, bristle cone. And what the goal is here is when I click and push up, I'm going to bring out just a nice bit of the uh, reddish color that my eyes saw when um, I was capturing this image here. I'm not going to worry about the blue sky now. We're going to come back to that once we build a mask. Uh, in my detail, it's pretty standard that I start with a sharpening of 40. I'm going to bump the radius on this one up to 0 0.8 and I have a detail of 50. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and mask out the sky a little bit here. This is a great feature. This will apply the sharpening only to the areas that are white in the mask and the areas that are black, um, which is obviously the sky, uh, will not receive the sharpening. Um, gonna lastly come down here to my effects tab. I love this dehaze and I'm just going to push that a little bit to the right here and just again, just about maybe oh, around 30-ish. We can tend to go overboard on this really quickly. One other thing before I leave and open up in the Photoshop, I'm gonna come up here to my clone tool, come down to visualize spots, 
and you can see that it shows where I have a little bit of dust bunnies hiding, one right there. I'm going to lower this down, hitting the bracket key, and one right there. Okay, and I think we've gone ahead and we've taken out the dust spots. So now I'm going to right click and we are going to edit in Photoshop. And we'll let Photoshop open up here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're, I'm going to show you, which is really the meat and potatoes of this lesson, is how to build the mask to isolate the bristlecone out from the sky. And what we're going to do is when this image opens, is come up here to the select panel. And we have two ways of building a mask here under the select panel. We can do it in color range and focus range. Well, I want to do the color range because even though we do have some soft focus back here, I still want to bring out a little bit of detail. So I want to build the mask around all of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and select color range. And we're going to take the fuzziness slider and turn it all the way down. And I'm just going to, to uh, click my first little eyedropper right into the main part uh, of this bristle cone right here. Now I'll usually take the, the fuzziness and move it up around somewhere between 30 to 40. And you can start to see down here in the black box if you have selection chosen just a little bit of a mass starting to develop. So now I've got to click on the middle eyedropper button. That's the plus symbol. And what I'm going to do is just start clicking around various portions of the bristle cone. And as I do this, you're going to see this mass start to grow and develop. Okay. Now the sky is going to stay black and that's what we want. So I can uh, move the fuzziness slider up a little bit more and it'll detect the area that I want to select and that looks pretty good right there. So as I as I get this where I want it, I'm now going to come over here and click OK and we're going to see the mask uh, start to we'll get the marching ants starting to go around what it is we want to select, which is the bristle cone. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring out the mid-tone contrast, and there's a number of different ways we're going to do it. We can do it, excuse me, but we're going to do it today in on one software using their dynamic contrast filter. If I was to simply open this photo now, uh, on one would see this as me wanting to add the midtone contrast to the entire image. And we know that's not what we want to do. We want to protect the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to my layer palette here. And you can see that the background is lit. I'm just going to hold the command uh, key and hit command or control J if you're on a PC. And now you will see that uh, my selection has just picked up what it is. The marching ants have stopped, but it, it is bu building a layer just on what I've selected. So now I can take this highlighted layer, come under File, and I'm going to come down here to Automate and go into my Effects panel in On1. This is where our dynamic contrast filter resides. And by the way, on On1, this is where I do about 95 plus percent of my work. This is really the panel where we can get into doing most of our adjustments. Okay, so as this opens, you're gonna see on the left here a lot of different uh, effects we can add. I'm simply gonna come down to my favorite filter, the Dynamic Contrast Filter, and I'm gonna come down to this preset called Natural. Now when I click on it, you're gonna see just the bristle cone um, open up. Uh, one of the things I like doing when I'm using the dynamic contrast filter is make sure my highlights are protected. So I'll take this highlight, slide it all the way over to the right here. And let's come up above our layer here to where it says master opacity. I'm going to turn this off. That was before we clicked on to dynamic contrast. And now you can see the bristle cone really start to come up. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Well, actually, I am going to add uh, or at least try to see what one other filter will do in here. I'm going to click on this plus button, add an empty layer, 
And I'm going to come up to the Color Enhancer filter. And I love this little fall con uh, or fall enhancer filter. It just goes in and selects my red colors. Uh, now, obviously, that's kind of over the top. So I'm going to come this time to layer opacity. I'm going to turn it off. So that's before we clicked it to look. Now I'm going to just subtly bump it back in until it's bringing up those warm hues in that bristlecone pine. And right there looks really good. So uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and, and protect my highlights. That'll protect this area way over here to the left. And we're going to click Apply. And what this will do now is it will take this effect and it'll put it on a separate layer in Photoshop. So as we come out of On One and come back into Photoshop, you will see that the perfect effects now has been picked up on its own layer. And I can turn that off, turn it back on. And the beautiful thing is, is once we're back in the Photoshop, we can actually go ahead and use the opacity slider if we think we've done a little too much, but I, I kind of like that. So what I want to do now is, is half of the equation has been dealt with. We've brought up the nice mid-tone contrast and the warm color that my eyes saw in this bristlecone pine. Now we're going to go after the sky and try to bring out a little bit of blue in that sky that I remember seeing. Before I do that, I want to come up under my layer and I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image. Okay, so now we're going to kind of start new again. We're going to go back up under Select we're going to go to color range and we'll go ahead and turn the fuzziness off. And this time what I want to do is click again on this on the farthest left eyedropper, come in and just start selecting the sky. And as we do that, that old mask goes away and you start to see a new mask come up. The first click always has to be with this with this farthest left eyedropper. Now, come to the middle one where we're going to add and we'll click around just a couple of clicks and you start to see the mask grow and now slide your fuzziness slider up just until we see the sky selected which is about right in there okay maybe come down a little bit more i'm going to minus out this far right one the this area over in here i don't really want that selected and that little portion there and now I can actually click right on the mask itself there too. And you saw that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And you can see the marching ants have been put around the sky. Okay, now we're gonna to go to my favorite palette here, the Tony Kuiper um, Actions palette. And this is the new one, version four. If you don't have this one, I highly recommend it. You can go to my website and you can go under discounts and affiliations and click on that and it will take you right to Tony's site and you can get this um, palette. In the new version 4 you will see that Tony uh, gives us all of these selections that we used to have to come down here under layers and open up. Now they're, they're just right here. So what I want to do on this one is I'm going to come here. I think my first move is I'm going to come to color balance. And no, actually I'm not. I'll, I take that back. I, I think I'll try hue saturation. There's a couple different ways we can do color balancing. We could do it through curves, um, color balance, but I'm going to try hue saturation for this one. And so I just click on hue saturation. I have to come down here and double click on the icon to get my hue saturation box to open up. And what I'm going to do is take the targeted adjustment tool right here, this little hand with the arrows moving right and left, and I'm going to place it up here in the sky. And when I click, you're, let's come back over here, you're going to see that it detected Photoshop detected blue for me. So I don't even have to guess at what I'm clicking on. Just click and slide, and when I slide to the right, okay it just starts to bring the sky out for me it's really simple now we're going to come down to the layer in my layer box turn the eyeball on and off before and after we can even take the opacity slider before after and now we've brought out some of that beautiful color 
I'm going to come right into here too. That my eye saw that's too much. We're turning that too much purple now. Okay, so right there. The beauty about these masks in Tony Kuiper is that they are self-feathering, so we don't even have to worry. The transition's beautiful, it's seamless. And um, now we pretty much have our image. I am going to come up here and we're going to go into the uh, history pa panel. And there, I had that up before. And I'm going to come all the way back to where we started. That was the coming right out of Lightroom and there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click back here into Lightroom. And I'm going to show you that's the before where we started. That's where we came out of Lightroom. And with our masks built, that's how we brought out the, uh, again, the warm hues and the detail using uh, the mid-tone contrast slider and the blues in the sky. So using the masks, you can see that I can control separate areas of my full, of my image, excuse me, and uh, quite effective. So one, con one change doesn't spill over into the other. And that's how easy it is to build a mask through select color. So I hope this lesson has helped you go back and take a look at some of your images where you have a sky against detail and try this technique and see if it doesn't help. Until next time, thank you for watching. This is Don Smith. Please check out my website and my workshops, www.donsmithphotography.com.